This episode sponsor is really close to my heart and I'm sure that it will be to yours as well as there are so few of us out there whose lives haven't been impacted at least in some way by mental health issues. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about BetterHelp. Life can be hard and sometimes we all need someone to talk to. That's why it's BetterHelp's mission to make therapy both more affordable and accessible. BetterHelp does an incredible job at bringing mental health services to my community. Because whether you live in a remote wilderness cabin or if you're a traveling nomad, as long as you've got an internet connection, BetterHelp can connect you with a trained professional. Everything is done online, and by filling out just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a therapist in as little as a few days. To sign up and get matched, there's a link in the description of this video. Clicking that link helps to support our channel, but it also gets you 10% off of your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thank you BetterHelp for the work that you do, and thank you for supporting our channel and helping to make what we do possible. One thing that encourages a lot of people to build tiny homes is a desire to return to a simpler way of life, to foster a deeper connection with the natural world. And this next couple who built the most beautiful DIY tiny home here in Wales have done just that. Hi Amy, how Hi are guys. you? Yeah, very well, thank you. G'day Tom, how's it going mate? How are you doing? Yeah. Very well, thank you. It's lovely to be here and this is such a beautiful home you've built here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so first of all, what was it that made you decide to build a tiny house? A big factor for us was environmental. We wanted to do something that was low impact and here with a tiny house we can move this house and we've only benefited the land. I think being in a small space means you're outside a lot more. Living a bit more simply as well, like we had to get rid of a lot of stuff that we realised we didn't really need. So it's quite nice to design the house around the stuff that we had and really cut out stuff we don't need. Tom's lived a life, quite a rural life, haven't you, where you've lived outside a lot of the time and I never have, I've always lived in a city. And I just was completely disconnected from outside. You know, like I, I rarely would think to go out and look up at the stars or wonder where the moon was or I just never did that. And so this movement of our life as well, coming outside more and forcing us to connect more with the elements and with nature has been such a journey for me, but it's been a really important one. And I think one of the most beautiful things about tiny house living is that increased connection with outdoors and nature. And of course, that's something that's really important to you as well, because you've set up a forest school here. Can you tell me about that? We've both been kind of working in education. We both sort of have experience in that. So yeah, we'd had the idea to start a forest school, something we've both been working in other jobs and we want to start our own. We work with young people from toddlers to adults. It's very sort of learner-led, a lot of free play, and it's on the onus of the, the learner to do what they want. So there's a lot of freedom and autonomy there, which is just a lovely thing to witness yeah. and to be part of and to facilitate. It's the exact and opposite to regular school. Basically, exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 And as I was going on my own journey of nature connection, I suppose, it felt right that I would begin to share the benefits that that's had on my life. Yeah. And for a school for us, we wanted to start right at the bottom with the young kids for them not to lose that sense of wonder, just to keep it going all throughout their lives. Like we work with teenagers as well. And I love how much you've embodied that philosophy with your own home and everything you've set up here. Like, I love what you've done with the gardens. Thank Thank you. I was actually just remembering this morning when we were building a house, we watched quite a lot of your, your shows, so it's quite funny that you guys are here now. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so we've got a grey water system which filters the water from our sink and our shower, which goes through the bed here. The iris is there, which purify the water, and then it kind of runs in a pipe. This whole place used to be a big barn, so this is a concrete trough, so the water runs in and We've got all our strawberries and we had courgettes growing there from the water, so we don't have to water those. And then we've got this little plot here, which is chicken proofed. It's our first year growing for a long time, so it's all a process. Yeah. <laughs> we've made lots of mistakes and learned lots of things, but it's exciting to be growing some of our own food. Murray's grey water system really is so clever, and it's really cool to see how many people have taken that idea and adapted it and made it work in all these different environments in different ways. Yeah, so the first thing the chickens do in the morning when they come out is they come and they eat all of our scraps from our sink. I remember Murray had a trap to catch all of that stuff and he used a worm composting. That's right. We were going to do that, but then we thought, oh, the chickens are just eating it, so that works. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. I love it. 
Yeah, we've also got the greenhouse, which the doors, it's basically a shower that's been made into a greenhouse. Our neighbours were throwing it away, all of their, they had a few showers, like different panels, and Tom made it into a greenhouse. So it's, yeah, the story of a lot of what we do here is we just, whatever we can get our hands on, we just make it into something that we can use. And you're completely off the grid with this home, aren't you? We are, yeah. We're lucky enough on the land there's a borehole, so we have water from the borehole. We've got solar panels, so two down here and four on the roof and a big battery bank. So yeah, we sort of designed the house around being off-grid all year. And we made quite a lot of sacrifices. Well, that we, yeah, I think Amy more than me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no we, hairdryer. We could, yeah, exactly. None of the heating devices. We don't have a washing machine at the moment either, so we've been going to the local laundrette. And even though we have the borehole, when we first moved here, for five months we had no water source. Mm. Um, and so we had to be quite creative with what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> we ended up just collecting rainwater and filtering it, and we did everything for those through the winter actually with rain. And the parking spot that you've got here is just lovely. Can you talk to me about how you came to be here on the spot? Yeah, well, we knew where we wanted to live because we knew where needed a forest school, um, where that was lacking. And so we looked around local areas and had a look on Facebook and joined groups. We had people contact us and they invited us to be here and that's how we found this. And yeah, we were so lucky. Fantastic. And what a spot this is as well. Like you've got gorgeous views up here too. Oh, it's so nice. I wake up smiling every morning. I'm sure at one point maybe it will wear off, but it hasn't yet. And now let's talk about the house. What size is it? So it's seven and a half meters length, four meters to the apex, the ridge line, and then 2.55, which is the maximum width. Fantastic. And can you tell me about the design of the home? Yeah, so we spent a lot of time designing it. We used a program called SketchUp to kind of work out what we wanted, what was essential. And we went for what we call a salt box. So the, the ridge line is sort of off center, which allows us for a walkway, which we'll show you in a bit. So we've used a lot of recycled and reclaimed materials and we found all of our windows in a skip. What a find. And uh, yeah, so all of them apart from these doors were, were found in that skip, so we rubbed them down. But then obviously the dimensions we kind of built around the dimensions of those windows. But it's self-facing, so all of the windows are, are facing this way. We've got nothing on the back, which for this location works really well. Yeah. yeah. And the cedar cladding as well. The reason we went for that is because it ages so nicely over time. It does. Like it's already a different grey now and it's just, it's beautiful. It's only going to continue to change and we wanted a house that had that evolving character. And amazingly, you've built this home entirely yourselves. Can you talk to me about what that process was like? It was like step by step, just worry about tomorrow, you know. that's We just knew that we wanted to do it and that's how it started. We were both working full time and so... I was doing four days, so it was kind of every Tuesday and Saturday for the whole year, we were up there working on it. Yeah. And we had help as well, like it was a community yeah, effort, we have you done know, it our, my dad would come and help us every week, which was invaluable, and everyone got really stuck in. We were really surprised, at first people didn't really understand what we were doing, it's like a tiny house, what's a tiny house? Like, <laughs> um, but then once the project started going, people became quite inspired by it, and we would have a lot of people come by, ask us questions, and what we found was the majority of people were like, this is my dream. Yeah, that gave us a bit of momentum as well, just to keep going and to have a bit of faith. And yeah, here we are. Amy mentioned her dad. I also need to mention my dad. My dad's been really important in this. He's done all the window frames and everything like that. He's a carpenter. So I learned a lot of skills from doing that. It's so good to have that foundational knowledge and it really is evident in the final result. Thank you, yeah. Well, you've just done such a great job on the outside of this home and I'm so excited to see the interior. Can we take a look? Of course, yeah, of course, come, come in. in. Thank you very much. Oh, this is absolutely charming. I especially love all the beautiful woodwork in here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we used to go for walks for hours on end in a friend's woodland looking for the perfect pieces of wood for exactly this. Yeah. Every time we went for a walk, basically our eyes were just like looking for bits of wood that could be a feature. It just adds so much character, doesn't it? And then you've got the couch here as well? Yep, so the couch pulls out into a double bed. Um, we have storage underneath. And um, this was also foraged. In the UK, we have something called Free Cycle, which is where people put up things that they're going to throw away and you can come and collect them. And quite a lot that we've got from this house was from Free Cycle. So to be honest, we were able to build this house in the way that we have and as cheaply as we did because of the amount that people throw away. Yep. Like all of our floorboards, Tom was on a run one day and some guy was redecorating his house and they were just in his garden. So we got them. And That's we, incredible. We also, on Free Cycle, a lot of people give away bed slats. 
And so it's quite a lot of our furniture and things that we've made have come from bed slats that we've repurposed, like these All wardrobe the door doors, fronts for example. And wardrobe fronts are made from repurposed bed slats. Yeah. Amazing. And you have built quite a bit of storage into this part of the home as well, haven't you? Yeah, storage was a big part that it was important for us because, yeah, we have quite a lot of things and we needed some of them to go. We were really chuffed with the wardrobe. We have a light in there as well that we can open up in two big drawers there. We've also got storage built into the steps too. We've tried to be as clever as we can with storage. You have to be. And it's such a cool dainty fire that you've got in this house as well. And I especially love the way that you've rigged it up for the hot water system too. That's really clever. Mm -hmm. That was Tom's idea. <laughs> We went for a really small fire because previously I'd lived in a little van and I had a big one and it was just too hot. So yeah. I'd, I'd be in the winter, I'd have to open all the windows. And so we went for a really small one and we, the house is insulated with sheep's wool and we went for um, two before construction. So we've got 100 mil of sheep's wool. So it's quite well insulated. And most of the time, just having the oven on to cook dinner is enough to heat the house too. Yeah, the pipe around, I can't remember where I saw that idea, but it's really great in the winter because we've got the fire on anyway. And we've also added an extra grate so we can boil a kettle on it and we often cook on it. And it just heats the water to save us using the gas for washing up and things like that. Yeah. And then above you is a loft and it looks like you've converted this into an office. Yeah, one of the things that we knew when we built this house is that both of us do some work from home. We work as coaches, wellbeing coaches, and we needed to be able to both have a space to work. So the desk was really important and this is sort of my, has become my office and then Tom has the table and especially now we're working together at the forest school, it's perfect because we just ask questions shouting down from up there like, what should we do about this? So yeah, it works really well. It's a great space. I love it out there. This is another idea we got from one of your episodes is the mezzanine as the seat and having this as a footstool. So that was a really great space saving idea. Such yeah. a great idea. Yeah. And then over here we've got your kitchen and you've actually designed in quite a lot of space into this kitchen, haven't you? Yeah, it's surprising how much storage we have in here and we've, we've got this kind of works as a desk but also an extension of the kitchen surface. And then we've got this kind of half kitchen surface over here which is actually quite useful. And I like the way that it's done as well, beautiful tile work. Again, these were from FreeCycle and we use them on the back of the burner as well. This whole space is about making the most of what we could get hold of. The other good thing about a tiny house is obviously the space is smaller, so we're able to get these off cuts, a nice bit of chop block here. And then this is really nice resin worked up, which my dad was doing a big job in here, this as his off cuts. Brilliant. You've got all the necessary appliances in here, including a good oven and cooktop. Yeah, that oven, there's a slight mark on the oven, which meant that it was a reduction oven and they were just giving away a fraction of the price. And so we were like, we can live with that, <laughs> with that mark. So again, that was a great find for us. We do a lot of cooking in this house as well. So we bake and that oven's been perfect. And I really like what you've done with the pull-out basket storage as well. That's really neat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we keep our veg in those baskets. It just, it lets it air, so it means that it doesn't rot as easily. And they were just an idea that we come up with that we really liked. Great. Beautiful copper work on the tap too. <laughs> My dad, one of the things he does is fits bathrooms and kitchens. So we've always had down the back of the garden at his house, just a big bucket of leftover copper. So it probably wasn't any cheaper or it was probably a lot more work, but I really like the look of the copper and how it tarnishes over time. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'll see the shower as well is made from the same stuff and it's got this yeah, lovely verdigris green, which, which I really love. And beyond that door there, I'm guessing we must have your bathroom. We do indeed, yeah. Can we take a look? Of course. All right. Oh, this is really nicely done. Again, I love the combination of the tiles and the copper work. Oh, thank you. Again, tiles that were foraged and Tom's handiwork on the taps. Yeah, what a cute little basin you found here as well. <laughs> yeah, we like this little butler. I can't remember where we got this. I think we found it on Facebook Marketplace or something like that. But yeah, it works. It fits perfectly. It's so dainty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these are more examples of our bed slats that have gone to, to good use to make our cupboards as well. Great. And I love the bath too. What a great find that was. I needed a bath. Like there was one thing that I really wanted and we were able to make it work and we actually built the house around this bath in the end. So I feel very lucky to be able to sit in there. It feels like a little cave. When I worked out the process of how to build everything, I realised, ah, the very first thing that needs to go in is the bath so that I could build everything around it. We put this in and then it kind of goes underneath the walkway and into the kitchen so we built everything around the bath. Yeah, that's the way to do it though, isn't it? You've got to figure out the things that are really important to you and make sure you fit them in. Exactly. exactly. 
be. And you've got the composting toilet here too? Yeah, so that was another thing we knew from the offset that we needed uh, as a composting toilet. And we've actually just gone for just a hole in the bottom of the subfloor. Right. So it just goes through and there's a bucket underneath which we take and put into a big barrel. And upstairs I'm guessing we've got your sleeping loft. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. This is really well done and I'm amazed that I can stand up here. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we can sit up in bed, which is something that we wanted because we both do a lot of readings. We wanted to be able to read in bed. And yeah, this was the main reason we had the, the ridge line. You can walk into bed and get dressed and these drawers are for putting all our clothes there. Neither of us are particularly tidy, so we can just open them, chuck our clothes in and it looks tidy. Great way of doing it. Yeah. And it's such a cosy space up here as well. I love what you've done with all the plants. Yeah, that gives it a sense of privacy as well. When people come in, it just makes it feel like a different room in itself. And then the view that we have from the window as well is just, it's just so nice to wake up and see green and a landscape. It's gorgeous. And you've chosen not to put curtains in. It's more that we just haven't got around to it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where if you don't, don't do really... it by the time you move in, you're never going to do it. True. But actually, we haven't found a need for them because it's quite private here. And we really enjoy being able to see the sun come up and go down and to have a natural light come in as well. So we haven't really found a need no. for curtains. The main thing we were thinking was in the summer we'd need blinds to stop it getting really hot, but it wasn't really an issue. No. Mainly because we didn't have a summer this year. <laughs> yeah, because we live in Wales <laughs> we live in and it Wales, rained. But, um, there was a lot of that going around. Yeah. 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 Even when on the really hot days, I think because of the insulation, it didn't get too hot in it. Brilliant. Yeah. That was good. And so how long have you been living in the home now? We've been here a year, actually, to the day last week, so... Happy anniversary to us of living here. Happy tiny house anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. And how are you finding life in the tiny home? It just feels normal, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, there was a very short transition time and it just felt like home really quickly. There's not really that much that we uh, would change. This space means so much to us because of the fact that we built it together and everything has got a piece of us inside of it and a piece of the journey, like the odyssey that we've taken to get here. You know, it was no easy ride, so it means a lot. It's sort of the amalgamation of all of our efforts, our persistence, our values, like our faith that we had, that if there's something that you want to do, you just got to do it. This whole project's been on a wing and a prayer, really. I think if we had known everything that needed to happen before we started, we probably wouldn't have done it. But we also knew that, so we kind of just started. And yeah, we kind of took a bit of a leap of faith. It was a tough transition. Yeah. Like, it was a really tough transition. So. The first four or five months of setting everything up, because there's not so many people you can go to even for help with this sort of projects. Right. When we had a problem, for example, we thought it was with our, it was with our hot water and we thought it was with the cooker and someone came and it's like, oh, you don't tick any box. We don't know how to help you with this, you know. So there was a lot of pressure on Tom when we first moved here to be the one to fix everything. When we first arrived, we only had two solar panels. When we went to put them on the roof, I realised there was a bracket that I needed, uh, which we had to order from America, and it took months and months to arrive. So <laughs> we had some electricity, but it wasn't really enough through the winter. We'd often run out of power, so it was very challenging. So you feel like you're through the other side of all of that? A hundred percent. But the space wasn't the problem. It's just the the fact that you are everything has to come from you you know like you are in control of the water and and the solar and you have to make sure that that's there and because we're doing something that not many people have done the help isn't there like i said but also there's little things like we can't get insured on our house because there's no box for this in the uk at, at this moment yeah and so there's actually a lot of insecurity about the way we're living would you say that insecurity is greater than the level of insecurity you would feel if you were renting a space I think for us, we feel that the level of insecurity globally is quite significant at this point. Yeah. And so we felt that to feel secure was a bit of an illusion, I yeah. think, <laughs> in general. And so we felt that even though there was that feeling of insecurity here, that we were sort of embracing the situation at large. We felt like the biggest security we could give ourselves was self-sufficiency and that that was what was important. It's a difficult time. It sure is. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in building your home? Yes, yeah, so I think we worked out that the shell and the building itself, we spent around 18000 And on top of that, well, there were other costs, like renting the space we built it and moving it here and the solar system. In total, around 28000 That's a great result, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And now you're all settled into your home. What does the future hold for you now? 
That's a big question. <laughs> Who knows? Like we're just continuing to enjoy what we're doing. We're feeling like we've hit something really good with the forest school and we've got a lot of people coming for our doors every week that we're serving, which feels amazing. I would quite like to be talking about my experiences of living in the tiny house a little bit more. So I'm thinking of starting a podcast and talking about that journey. Cool. And Tom, you're thinking about... Yeah, so I'm partnering up with a, with a good friend and we are sort of in the process of talking about building tiny houses, wanting to really focus on sustainability and local materials and using a lot of upcycling and recycling as well if we can. So yeah, that's a, a new venture. What a great mission. Well, this is just such a beautiful home that you've built for yourself. And I love that this is such a wonderful place for you to now expand into the world and take on all of these amazing projects. Thank you so much for sharing it with oh, me. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Awesome mm. to be here. Amy and Tom really have crafted themselves such a wonderful home here. I love how so much of the design was dictated by all of these treasures that they found on their journey and that such thrifty material sourcing has enabled them to build this home for a remarkable budget. This place really is just such an incredible accomplishment. <laughs>